<laughs> Hi, and welcome to this podcast um, for the natural practice. My name is Marcos Rangos. I'm Constellations Counselor at the Practice, and I'm delighted to be chatting with Dr. David Owen. Uh, David, you founded the Natural Practice over 40 years ago, um, and it's great to chat to you. You're going to be talking about illness as part of a continuum, and I'd love to hear more. Thank you, Marcus. It's uh, nice to be talking to you and to those who are listening. Yes, uh, I've developed my thinking on this over a number of years of practice, really. And the reason for wanting to talk more about it is I think there's a tension between uh, individuals seeing illness as a threshold event, a sort of, you know, something happens to them, they're knocked over by it and they bounce back up or they've got to uh, recover from it and, and be well again, a sort of very much a sort of adversarial, uh, the illness is somehow the Ill enemy. And, it's, and certainly there are times when, you know, we have to, or it's useful to look at illness in that way. But there is another way of looking at illness, which is, as I say, part of a continuum, something that happens to us as part of our growth, it's something uh, about our interface with our environment uh, and we can develop through it. We can actually move to a new state of well-being and a, and a state of health by overcoming our illness and by listening to what the body has to tell us. So one of the phrases I use often with patients is, is what's your body trying to tell you when, they, when someone comes in with an illness? So it's not just, you know, yes, you have to remove the trigger events or the causation where you can, but the, there's often many other things going on as well as those trigger events or causes. So you know, we all know that different people have different susceptibility to different things. We each have an individualized susceptibility and understanding what our susceptibility is and how to work with it is a sort of key part of us maintaining our well-being and our resilience and operating most effectively in the environment we're in. So there's our susceptibility is part of it, our so-called constitution. And again, Really, I suppose what, I, what I've seen is as a sort of reaction almost to a, a increasing uh, interpretation or view of medicine through surgery and pharmacological interactions is, is people see that the sort of the drug or the operation is the key um, event in terms of getting better. But of course, yeah, people have a huge capacity to self heal and yes. rebalance. Um, and our constitution is sort of how we manage to do that what what is our, our capacity for rebalancing um and it's tied in with our susceptibility so constitution susceptibility and the third bit of that is what i call sort of vitality bounce the acupuncturists call it chi energy that sort of bit of us that has the potential to um to, to respond to things and you know mm. you know you, i mean i guess you know and uh, those listening will know that you know if there's a cough or a bug going around they're much more likely to go down with it, go down with it more seriously. If they're run down, if their constitution isn't good, their vitality is low and they've got a high level of susceptibility, which is why in recurrent acute infections often turn into sort of more chronic um, illnesses. Uh, and, and why it's so key at the moment with the sort of viral threats and illnesses all around and people being very fearful of illness to actually consider it in a wider context than just, you know, this bug's going to get me or that bug's going to get me. Um, and on that, David, I think that's such a key point. So I guess listeners might be interested in how how might you view something like the coronavirus in this continuum way rather than as a trigger uh, virus? Is, is there any any way of thinking or looking at it which is different to perhaps what we hear in a mainstream way? Well, I think there are things about our susceptibility. So one of the things that's really starkly highlighted is some people are more susceptible. So if you look at the autoimmune response and the, um, the cases that um, deteriorate and need intensive care or even um, have higher levels of, of long COVID or even mortality tends to increase the risk of that depends on what other illnesses people have had. So if you've had previous sort of post-viral illnesses, the susceptibility to long COVID is higher. Yes. If, um, if you're older, obviously we know that you know the risk of COVID, the mortality risk doubles every seven years of age. So why is that? What is it about individuals' susceptibility that changes with age? You know, there's lots of factors. I think environmental toxins in terms of the uh, bod body's ability to respond to illness that changes with age. But it's such a stark question, really. It raises about uh, individual susceptibility. And we know diabetics and certain racial and ethnic groups are more susceptible. But I think it, 
we need to be really unpacking that because it's only an exaggeration and a, an illustration of what we see all the time in terms of susceptibility. So, you know, obesity, diabetes, which bad prognostic factors for COVID, are also bad prognostic factors for lots of infections. Sure. So that's on the one hand, the individual side, but I also think there's population, there's, you know, there's issues around what I call global health governance that just isn't being addressed, you know, and that is, you know, how do illnesses spread? What's its interface with animal husbandry practices um, in terms of how quickly do we respond to viruses and how do we create a healthy environment that has international travel and things like that? And, you know, so I think those are bigger questions, which I don't want to sort of extrapolate outside of my area of expertise. But I suppose my area of expertise is listening deeply to patients with illnesses, all sorts of illnesses, including COVID, and trying to understand for them what's going on. And it's the idea of health, thinking people, getting people and encouraging people to think about health as a continuum is a counterpoint to really, it's all about the virus or it's all about one threshold event. Absolutely. And I, I can see, I can see that. And I, I'd love to hear more. It, so if you have a patient who's, who's re willing to look at their kind of continuum of health and their life, and I think you talked about it in a piece of writing I read about like a journey, their patient journey, what, in what ways would you work with someone to, to work with their journey and their continuous health? Well, I think it is helpful to think of it as a journey because also getting better is often a journey. And I think, again, because of the way uh, medicine has developed, particularly more recently, people think it's just a matter of taking a course of treatment or having a surgery, and somehow you're going to sort of time warp straight back to where before you were ever ill. And actually, my experience, again, is that people have to sort of turn around and walk back the way they've come, a few various what I would call laws of cure, you know, returning to a previous state of well-being. And often actually even more than that, actually moving to a new state, a state which is different from the one in which they got ill in. But I think, you know, one of the ways I work is, is, is what we would call a timeline. So just mapping that history. And it's surprising how often, you know, events in earlier life. So I don't know, recurrent tonsillitis and infections. Yeah. And that might have been treated with antibiotics. They might have affected the gut in the person. They might have left them with some other sensitivity or some other um, illness that then develops over a period of time. So it's sort of how it evolves. So we'd see, mm. for example, a connection between asthma, eczema, and hay fever. That they're all part of an allergic sort of susceptibility. And you know we're quite keen that we try and help people unpack that. I mean, paradoxically, you know, when you're treating with patients with asthma, sometimes you'll get other previous allergies that they've had coming back, almost returning for a time. So it's a real sort of, if you like, physical manifestation of that journey. And some patients are quite surprised by that and it takes a bit of explanation for them to understand. But usually during that journey, journey the illness becomes more superficial. It has less um, impact on their overall life as they get better. And is there something, it's so fascinating to hear this, David. So I, I think I understand that in a way on that kind of life path, you're taking people back to understand uh, linkages with maybe previous uh, illnesses. Is there some, is it that actually through that understanding their constitution also gets stronger? What is it that shifts with that greater understanding? Absolutely. Well, our constitution is influenced by what we do over our lifetime, certainly, but it's also very influenced by hereditary factors and you know, our early um, prenatal existence, so the uh, well-being and health of our parents um, yeah. and previous generations. And that's true not just of physical well-being, but psychological, which sometimes call transgenerational factors as well. Mm. And uh, I'm picking those and that's not always accessible you know you can't go always go back too far in a person's uh, family history but certainly major patterns major themes you can pick up on and often are quite relevant and uh, sometimes it, it, it points towards a particular intervention sometimes it points to a person sort of adjusting to the way they are a bit like revisiting uh, developmental steps in your childhood actually allows you to sort of decide if you want to be treat yourself in a slightly different way so for example i mean i have um i've talked before about abuse whether it's psychological bullying uh, sexual abuse uh, being a major contributing factor to chronic disease yes very sad but you know very common to see qualities of that in patients um in many patients so it's not an unusual event 
But when you unpick it and you work with patients, you go back to that person whose sort of development has almost been frozen at a particular point in time. And by working with them, you almost precariously allow them to revisit that stage in their development. So this is a little bit more in your um, area of uh, constellation th counselling and, and, and family counselling and family therapy that where we see those factors being really uh, at play. But it is a, it's a delight to unpick some of those in the consultation. And the beauty of it is it does often point to a piece of work that the person can do, you know, a bit of guided writing, a bit of self imagery, quite often dreams are released after those conversations, they point towards certain remedies, I particularly find the homeopathic remedies useful for that sort of those sort of indications. Yeah. Um, so that sort of holistic approach, which is sort of, so I like to sometimes think about holism, not just in terms of sort of mind, body and spirit, but in terms of sort of past, present and future, so that you get an idea that it's a sort of holistic in that way, in terms of length and longitude as well as in terms of width and capacity. Yeah, I get that. David, thank you so much. I'm conscious that we're probably going to have to wrap up, but just to say, are there, is there anything you would like to share by way of concluding this particular podcast um, on, on illness as part of a continuum? I think, it's, I think it's to make the point that the you know, Western, modern Western medical approaches, which have very specific, wonderful treatments for many trigger events and threshold causes and causation, um, shouldn't be thrown out. You know, we're not in any way saying it hasn't got its place. But there is a counterpoint, which is this other way of looking at illness. And it's, I think, really important uh, at the moment not to forget that, that over my career, uh, I've seen that view be become increasingly treated as fringe, alternative, a minority view. And I think people and patients individually and populations are suffering because of that. So it's just a request. And of course, people will do and choose the treatment they, uh, they want and they feel ready for. But alongside you know, the appropriate prevention, the appropriate targeted drug or surgery for a particular illness or vaccination, consider the broader well-being issues that, that influence your susceptibility, nutrition, psychological state, uh, toxicity and, and these often link with those that are important for the health of our communities and environment as well think about uh, your constitution how to keep your constitution well what you can do to keep fit keep robustly well whether it's the right amount of rest whether it's in terms of uh, exercise what what would influence your constitution and those around you and your children uh, and those you care for uh, and have a caring view for and, and, and listen to your vitality. So the, perhaps the last thing I'd say is just give yourself a mental check. Score your vitality now. You might like to do this out of 10. You know, what's your level of bounce? What's your level of well-being? And how does it average over the day? You know, and if it's sort of, you know, 8, 9, 10 out of 10, absolutely great. You know, 6 or 7, have a think. You need to be thinking about addressing it. And if it's dropping down to 5 and below, have a good look at your life. You know, maybe take stock. See what you can do. Because it's a great way of navigating in terms of this, in the journey of life and the journey of well-being is follow your vitality, attend to those things that will lift it. And, <laughs> and uh, I think it can be fun as well as everything else. That's a lovely, really lovely way to, to end this particular podcast. Thank you, David. And uh, thank you to uh, those of you who are listening. If you've uh, enjoyed this podcast, that's really great. We'd love to get some feedback from you and do feel free to pass it on to anyone else. Um, you, if you haven't uh, already signed up to uh, the Natural Practice newsletter, you can do that on the website. Um, and also, if you've got any inquiries, just get in touch at inquiries at thenaturalpractice.com. It would be great to hear from you. Also, if there are any themes you'd like to hear about um, in the coming weeks, uh, we'd love to respond. Thanks very much. And thank you, David.